May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week, Jesus continues his series of parables that he preaches from the boat. I don't know if you had the experience that I had when I was reading this parable this week in preparation, but I got a little bit overwhelmed with image after image coming at us. It was hard to take it in and I found myself just getting stuck on, oh, the mustard seed, I know the mustard seed. And before that, the parable was over. I was processing of my husband Joe this week and recapping some of them for him. There is the obvious familiarity of the mustard seed parable, but beyond that, there are others like the pearl of great price which I was telling Joe about. And I said, a merchant went and he sold everything he had to buy one single pearl of great price. And Joe was like, that's crazy. And I said, I know it really is. And then Joe countered with, well, was it a magical pearl? I laughed, but also said, no, I think it was just like a normal pearl, which is even crazier in a way. This was just a passing conversation, but it kept coming back to me, that question of, well, was it magical? Because that would have made way more sense. If the pearl had been magical, then maybe this merchant would have had a roof to sleep on under that night. And maybe he would have had food to eat from some kind of magical crop that appeared from this tiny little sphere of a pearl. But it wasn't. And he had nothing to his name other than one tiny little pearl. Godly play, which is our curriculum that we use for our children's ministry at St. Paul's, sets the context beautifully for these parables. It says that there was once someone who said such wonderful things and did such amazing things that people followed him. As they followed him, they heard him talking about a kingdom but it was not the kingdom they lived in. It was not like any kingdom they had ever visited. It was not like any kingdom they'd ever heard of. They couldn't help it. They had to ask him what the kingdom of heaven was like. And then the godly play story goes on to explain these parables. And I'll paraphrase Jesus's answer when he said, the kingdom of heaven is like the seed of a mustard bush an invasive plant, the sourdough starter you put in your bread, the net that you throw into the sea to catch fish, the pearl that you search for. Jesus wrapped up his explanation of the kingdom of heaven. And I imagine the disciples, some of them at least, maybe had the same question as Joe. Is there any magic there? I could imagine them asking, if we follow you, will we have any magical powers? The UCC minister, Talitha Arnold, wrote more about this question. She talked about that disappointment that the disciples and us, in a way, might feel as we hear the parable. She said, I doubt that my congregation's visions of heaven include mustard bushes and housework. God is more often seen as Lord or King than farmer or baker woman. I think of the hymns that we sing at St. Paul's when we're together. Crown him with many crowns, we sing. We think of God in this ethereal way, but today Jesus speaks using the most down-to-earth concepts to illustrate the kingdom of heaven. Talitha Arnold finished her quote when she said, For Jesus, God's realm is not some esoteric kingdom in the sweet by and by, but as close as the next mustard bush or loaf of bread. This story brought to mind another passage in scripture, which is one of the most poignant stories that there is. It comes from the Old Testament, and it's one of the last scenes to include Moses. 
He's led his people out of Egypt and they are standing overlooking the promised land, which Moses will never get to. He's led his people as far as he can and then he stands overlooking the land and offers these final words to them. He said, the word is very near you, he said. The commandments that have been given to you aren't too hard from you, nor are they too far away. It is not in heaven, nor is it beyond the sea, but the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. In these earthy kingdom parables, Jesus is echoing those same words, that same truth that Moses shared with his people. And today in this wild, unexpected time, I wanna reaffirm that truth for you and for me, that the kingdom, that the word, that a life lived with God is not too far away from you. It's not just waiting for you in heaven at the end of this trial. It's not beyond the sea in another land. It's not waiting for you when you find that thing you've just been looking for because the word is already very near you, in your hand in your mouth, in your heart. And I want to remind us of that truth today because I think the kingdom of heaven can feel very distant sometimes. It can feel like it's in heaven alone or in another land beyond the sea. We don't have that transcendent worship to lift our hearts in praise. I never in a million years imagined that I'd be preaching to you from my kitchen. But here we are, and I wanted to embrace the ordinariness of this, reminding us that here, too, the kingdom of heaven exists. But I know it can feel distant because this tiny invisible germ continues to wreak havoc on our lives. The promises of the kingdom feel so distant faced with the oppression and the injustice that we put against each other that exists all around us. And so I imagine us in our own way asking Jesus, where is this kingdom? What is it? Just like the disciples did. And I imagine him saying to us, my friends, the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. It's in the weeds that you pull from your garden. It's in the sourdough starter in your fridge. It's in the fields and the trails that you walk through on the weekends. It's very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart. And maybe like the disciples, we might find ourselves just a little bit disappointed by that answer. It's so mundane, no magic wand to just make this all go away. There's no perfect magical pearl to seek for and find that will release us from our struggle. There isn't. But there is a God who we believe in who came down from the ethereal powers of heaven in the form of a man, Jesus. And this, not some distant theological thought, this has profound implications for you and me because what it means is that our mundane, messy bodies, our mundane, messy existences are now infused with the divine. There are threads of the divine all around us. Holiness within you. Holiness, wholeness all around. God in the form of Jesus 
taught us this in stories and parables that we'll never fully understand. That the kingdom of heaven is as close to us as our very bodies. And so what then could separate us from that kingdom? I think of the most beautiful words of Paul in his last part of his eighth chapter in his letter to Romans when he wrote, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The love of God was given to us in Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is all around. And there is nothing, no virus, no closed church building, no crazy political situation that will ever change that. The kingdom of heaven is near. It's all around. We just have to open our eyes to see it. Open our ears to listen for it. And open our hearts to believe that this is true. Amen.